Hey guys, custom hooks are a great way to move all your data and logic into components that can be reused across your whole app. Just before we take a look at creating your first custom hook, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tutorials like this. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave me a comment below. So here we have a really basic app with a stateful item of number with a function of set number. We've got a function here called generate number which is kind of replicating an API call by setting a timeout for 500 milliseconds so that we're waiting for a random number to be set to our number state. And then we're outputting both the number and a button to generate a number. So clicking this button here, we get a random number each time. But best practice really would be to remove all of these data calls from our front end component and move them into a custom hook so that we can do lots of other things with that data and reuse that component or that hook across the entirety of our app. So let's go ahead and create our first custom component. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new file and we'll call it use number.js. There we go. And then inside of here we'll export const use number equals there we go now we'll want to set in fact we won't we can just copy it across from here so we're going to move our number fit number state into here there we go and we're going to move our generate number function across as well copy that over there we go and then what we'll do is we'll use, so we haven't defined state, so I'll just import that in. And then we'll run a use effect so that when this hook loads, no dependencies, we will generate a number and hit save. Now, if we save the app, this is gonna break because num and generate number aren't defined. So we now need to pull those items into our app. And the way we do that is to say const num and generate number equals, and then we can just import in our use number hook, use number, there we go. And we don't need any parameters to be passed through to it. So if we hit save now, and back to here. Ah, and then the final thing we need to do is return our number and generate number. There we go, because we weren't exporting those functions to be able to pull them through. So now we're back to square one. We have our app running and it's generating random numbers on the click of a button. Now that's a custom hook in its most basic form and you can see all we've done so far is to remove all of that data code out of our main app and into a hook. But by calling this use number hook, we're creating a subscription, which means that anytime anything changes in here, anything dependent on these inside of our main app is gonna be re-rendered without reloading the whole page. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to pull data into this from an, from an external API and then continue to listen for changes. Um, for example, it could be a news feed or it could be user information being updated. So let's go ahead and see how we would handle that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another item to the state called timer and a function of set timer. New state and we'll set that to false. So i.e. the timer is, is not started. And then we can go down here and we can say const toggle timer equals and we will set the timer to the opposite of the current timer. So if the timer is running, toggle timer will stop the timer and if the timer is not running, toggle timer will start it. And then the next thing we'll need to do is pass that function through to our main app, we just hit save, and then we can pull through 
toggle timer just like that. Now at the moment toggle timer doesn't do anything so let's just make a change to this button and we'll say on click toggle timer and we'll just write timer in there for now. So now when we hit this button we're going to call the toggle timer function and the toggle timer function is going to change timer in the state but we still need to add one more element to get the timer working so let's go ahead and use use effect again and this time we'll give use effect the dependency of our timer so this is going to listen for any changes to our timer state so now we can say if the timer is true then um, in fact we'll need an interval so let's add one more thing to the state we'll call it inter and set inter because oh. use state and we'll just set that to null by default so now we can say set inter is set interval and then we'll do the generate number function every second and then we can say else if the timer is not active then we want to clear interval and because we've saved this interval to our state we can now reference it just like that and then we'll set a return of clear interval which if you know about uh, no we don't need yeah, inter. If you know about the use effects, we're using this return function to be ran each time that this component finishes. So we're clearing the timer. So now if we head back to our app.js, in fact, what we could also do is return back the timer itself so that our app knows if the timer is active. We can pull that through here. And then we could say... For example, if the timer is active, then say stop timer, else start timer. There we go. So it says start timer because we're passing back through timer and timer is not currently active. So if we go ahead and hit the start timer button, you'll see now that the number is changing every second because our app has created a subscription to our custom component. The custom component is checking every second and generating a new number. And because this num item that's being passed back through our custom hook to our main app is changing, it's causing anything reliant on this to refresh in the DOM without reloading the whole page. One final thing we could do is we could add a... Uh, in here... We could say uh, number button and then if the timer is active then no else active ah, wrong way around then active else no and I've got a CSS class in there which is just changing the color of the button depending on whether the timer is stopped or not. So just to make it absolutely clear to you how you use these custom hooks. First of all, we defined a file called use number. And it's important that when you create your custom hooks, you start them with use in lowercase. That way React and things like Visual Studio are gonna be able to check how you've constructed that hook to make sure it conforms to all of the standards and you don't get any problems. The second important thing with custom hooks or with any hooks is to make sure that they're always called at the top of your component. Never try and use them within use effects or within conditional statements. If you have any conditioning on that uh, custom hook then it's best you pass it into the hook itself and handle all of the logic in there. So inside of our custom hook we set some stateful items, we're using use effects and custom functions and we're passing back an object which contains the items we want to make available to our app itself. And they're imported in exactly the same way as you would if you were using use state or use effect or use context or any other custom hook. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, 
make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to this channel.